In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the second step to creating a phenomenal gun bunch in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about how you can become the best Madden player that you can possibly become in Madden 21. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We upload videos every single day that can help you take your game to the next level. Um, including on offense and on defense. So every day you get a defensive video, you also get some offensive tips as well. And so if you want to get better at this game, like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to know whenever we release new videos. Now, in the previous video, I was talking about the gun bunch and I'm talking about offense in a little bit different of a uh, terminology, kind of trying to simplify the way that you think about offense in Madden 21 and the way that we've kind of simplified it is we've tried to whittle it down to what are the essential components of an elite offensive scheme and if we can just focus on the essential components of the offensive scheme and how to basically navigate those play calls we can create a more effective offense and so due to that we're focusing in right now on the gun bunch if you want to get my complete finished and polished gun bunch offensive guide that is going to be available to you in the description you can get the entire offense for just 15 dollars but what we're going to focus on today is kind of step two of our process and so the first step of the process is to build a power play. So you've gotta have something that you can consistently call that is a power play. And we talked about yesterday why the play flood is so effective as a power play concept because it forces your opponent to have to do a specific style of adjustment to basically stop this in particular play. And so now that we've forced our opponent into having to adjust, the next step is to basically have something that is essentially a counter to that, something that you can go to that is essentially a, you know, we've, we've got them doing, we've got the defense trying to overplay this couple of, these couple of things, right? So now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, now that we know that they're going to adjust to these couple of things, here is something that we can go to that is essentially a counter to that. So that play in the gun bunch for me is this play Jets Dig. This is a very powerful passing concept for a lot of reasons, but it's primarily powerful when you combine it with the play Flood. And I'm going to talk about why in this video. So we're just going to come out in the play Jets Dig here. And I just want to start first and foremost by showing you the play Flood and kind of showing you how that works. And then I'm going to go over Jets Dig. So first and foremost, the way that we set up Flood is one simple adjustment. We like to Literally, this is all we do. We are going to put our running back on an option route. And so one of the ways that our opponent has to be, you know, one of the adjustments that they have to do to stop this is they have to have hard flats on the right and they have to have like a, you know, basically a hook curl on the left. They, If they have a hard flat on the right and they have a hook curl on the left, this is kind of the first component or step to stopping this. So it might look something like this. This might be the adjustment that we're gonna face. We're gonna see something like that, like a vert hook there. And then we might have like a hard flat on that side. And then you might see like a user kind of right in here that's gonna essentially um, you know, work backwards over to this side. So what it looked like is something like this. And at the snap of the ball, what you're gonna notice is if I call the play flood, then you see here this left side is going to be taken away, and really, you know, now I'm going to have to kind of play a mix, mix and match game with the other side. The one other thing that I want to hit on is the route to Devonte Adams. So you'll see that if they're in a traditional, you know, kind of Mabel coverage here, what that's going to look like and mean for you is it's going to mean that, you know, essentially if I do this right here, this combination. Um, then what you're going to see is that the R1 receiver is going to get open on the sideline, right over there on that sideline, as you can see right there. It's due to the fact that those zones are dropped at 25 yards, which is kind of a standard way that people like to start defensively. 
And so I just want to kind of highlight that because um, it is very likely that if you run flood consistently, one of the adjustments that they're going to do to try to stop this on a more consistent basis is they're going to put their curl flats at about 15 yards, okay? And so I just want to share that with you because I want, to, I want you to kind of be prepared that if they're making certain adjustments that you now know the counters. And that's kind of the idea behind this. So um, again, if we go to the play flood, what you're going to see is we're just gonna kind of set up a max coverage, but you're gonna see that this purple zone right here at 15 yards is gonna do a much, much better job. You'll see here that if I kind of wait on this and throw it, I throw it in the zone, and as you can see, they get an interception. So it is, it is not out of the realm of possibility that they will go to something like this to stop this route. And it's also interesting because if you have a tight end, like let's say you have a post route or like even a motion slant, right? I don't, I don't know if we really use a slant, but you know, if you had something that was crossing the field on the left side, a 15 yard curl flat's not gonna do a bad job. So it's very likely that you could see something like this. So anyways, this is kind of the idea behind this video. So what we're gonna show you here is the play Jets Dig and how to run it. And really we don't, we literally don't make an adjustment. There's zero adjustments necessary to this play, um, like literally none, okay? So you don't have to adjust if you don't want to. There's no adjustments necessary. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with this little Mabel coverage like this right here, but we are anticipating that, again, we've been running flood a lot, and so they're gonna probably do an adjustment like this where the, the guy is not manned up on the running back, but he's rather he's in a yellow zone. And so if you start to see this, this is where this play really becomes powerful. So. At the snap of the ball, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically look. If they are in zone coverage, meaning the linebackers back up at the snap of the ball, I'm going to quick throw it to the running back. So, see, look here, and then just quick throw it. And as you can see, I can easily truck up field and essentially, you know, be able to be very effective. You'll see that this works against five-yard curl or five-yard flat zones just the same. So, if I go to that Jets dig, then you'll see here, flat zone, and then I'll just truck right up here. And as you can see, I can get about six to seven yards this is a very popular tactic. It's very effective because because of the option route, you kind of force your opponent to have to play zone coverage on that side, or at least to have a yellow zone on that side and a hard flat. So it might look something like this. You know, maybe they do, you know, something as simple as this right here, where you could potentially see. I mean, this is a very uh, likely situation, and you know, there's really not a great way to kind of do this and um, the beauty of this is you'll see that if I go to the Jets dig play um, you know the man coverage might take it away but if I, if they're manning up then I can easily work that option out so that's just kind of a the cat and mouse game of this bunch it's also one of the reasons why it is very likely that your opponent will use her um, like right in here um, and the reason is because he wants to be able to essentially at the snap of the ball be able to jump the running back route. It's very, very common that this can happen. And so um, if that's the case, then we're going to just jump to our next read, uh, which if they're not playing, you know, disciplined coverage, that's our, that's our next read, this little quick flat over here to the right side. As you can see, if they're not playing hard flats on both sides of the field, we want to always have the ability to be able to take advantage of that, okay? So that's one of the primary things we have. The next thing, and really the beauty of this play Jets Dig, especially against Gun Bunch, is its ability to be able to absolutely crush cover three. And, and let me show you just kind of how that works. So if I go to this play Jets Dig right here, this R1 receiver, if I see cover three, the R1 receiver will always be able to pretty much bomb it, um, as you can see over the top right there. Now, sometimes, and it is a little bit random, and I would say it's about 80% successful, but so occasionally what will happen is that you see there the guy kind of, um, you know, he kind of didn't do what we wanted him to do. But most of the time, this R1 receiver is going to, you know, be able to beat it over the top. If it doesn't, you can just hit that, that in route right there. Um, now that dig route is very is the same route as flood. It's a little bit deeper of a dig route, but it is basically the same concept or, or you know route. The reason this is significant is it is likely that your opponent is going to have to start have to adjust. So what he might do um, is he might take this corner on the right here and he might put him in an outside quarter. Um, now if he does, if he puts him in an outside quarter, I want to share with you just kind of a 
how this is going to look from the R1 receiver. So this is the outside quarter, and what you're going to see is that this thing is going to get over the top of it. As you can see, an outside quarter is not going to be able to defend that. Um, it, it has to be a specific type of an adjustment. So that's why I think it's really, really important for you to understand that. If you can understand that route, it will make a big difference for you. So um, another example is something you might see is something like this, like a cover, kind of a cover six invert, basically. Uh, and I just want to share this with you because I want you to understand this route because if you can understand that specific route, it's going to be very powerful for you. So let's go to the play Jets dig here. And I just want you to watch the R1 receiver. So this is like a cover four. Um, you'll see that I, I pass this to the right. Um, I mean, it's kind of tender, but I can typically get over that, over the cloud or over the quarters uh, style of coverage. And so the reason I'm suggesting that is that it's really, a, in particular, a specific adjustment that is going to open up some other stuff down the road. And that is that they're primarily either going to have to play Tampa 2, as you can see right here, Tampa 2, or they're gonna to have to play some type of cover uh, where the deep half is coming from that corner. The reason that matters is because it's gonna open up some other stuff down the road, but I just want you to kind of show you this. So this is like a cover two, will actually do a pretty good job. Okay, so cover two is kind of the defense that will do a decent job, especially if they bring those flat zones down. That's something that you have to be at least you know aware of, okay? So like for example, if they go to cover two, and let's just say they use her that middle crosser uh, and then they, you know, maybe do like a little Mabel coverage over here on the side with maybe a spy, you know, something like this, right? If that's what they do, if that's what they go to, if that's indeed the defense, you still are able to work this little quick route. It's just, as you can see, it's not as smooth as we'd probably like it to be. So cover two is primarily what they're going to be able to do. But if they run cover two, um, in our next video, we're going to be sharing with you how to deal with that from gun bunch. But again, we want to have the, a very specific progression here. Uh, we want to have the power play. We want to have the counter play. And then in tomorrow's video, we're going to be sharing with you some constraint theory plays of how you can deal with specific types of adjustments that your opponent is definitely going to do, such as, you know, cover two or, you know, deep halving the outside corner. Those are all things that, that is very likely that they will do. So we're going to give you some specific tools and how to handle that. But if you want to get the entire gun bunch guide, it is available in the description for just 15 bucks. Walks you through exactly what to do in every situation and how to truly master this offense. So thanks for watching this video. I want to invite you to come hang out on the stream. I stream every single week, Monday through Thursday night uh, from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time time so i'll be streaming this evening if you want to come by hang out and maybe play some madden you can come by and hang out thanks for watching and like i said if you want to get the full guide it is available in the description for just 15 bucks